Our next guest is uh, Donna Scala. She's with the U.S. Department of Labor, uh, federal government. Uh, apprenticeship for Training Program Specialist, Office of Apprenticeship. That's a long title. That's a long title. Why don't you tell us what you're doing and what the Department of Labor is sure. doing for Absolutely. manufacturing. It's my pleasure, actually, to be here and discuss the apprenticeship model, which is essentially a workforce development solution. Mm -hmm. And most people have a misguided understanding of the model. It's been around since 1937. It's under the purview of the United States Department of Labor. And it has two components. One is on-the-job learning, which is full-time supervised uh, employment. And the other part is related technical instruction. And when we talk about related technical instruction, we're talking about coursework that directly relates to the occupational title. Mm -hmm. So this works very well for individuals who may get a little bored with school if they can't apply what they're learning to a job. Also for dislike dislocated workers who need to get back in the workforce or for incumbent workers who need to upskill in their current occupational title or if they'd like to ladder into another one. How about veterans? Or Absolutely. We're working very closely with the veteran population to get mm -hmm. them re-engaged mm -hmm. and to get their skills upgraded so that they can you know, transition into employment. As an aside, and I don't want to dwell on this, are you familiar with Workshop for Warriors? I just San learned Diego? of that today. And uh, so, yes, I'll be uh, we're researching Hernan, that. Hernan, I forgot his last name, they'll kill me. Uh, he's done an incredible job uh, in San Diego, uh, but he's been working now for six years to get approval so that he can get payments from through the GI Bill of Rights. And it takes eight years for the U.S. government to give the certification. Um, I find that incredible. Uh, I, I don't know if you know anything about this or not, but it seems as though that here he's doing such an incredible job of retraining veterans, wounded veterans, and they can't get enough students because they can't pay for it because the GI Bill of Rights won't pay for it because he doesn't have a certification. So that's a sad story. It is sad and commentary. It, it's very unfortunate. Yes. That said. Continue. So essentially there are close to a thousand occupational titles that have been approved as apprenticeable occupations uh -huh. and those titles have been approved because business and industry has petitioned our national office for the occupations to become approved as apprenticeable occupations and the petition consists of what we call a training guide and business and industry subject matter experts will provide the on-the-job training that's required for a particular occupation. On location or at well, the on the job training, training on the job training is at the workplace, mm -hmm. and then a sampling of courses that would support that occupational title. So once the occupation becomes approved, these training guides are free to any business throughout the country that would like to use it. So we're providing a free training guide to, to businesses, and that's real important for the smaller companies because they don't have the wherewithal or the budget to hire a consultant to figure this out. So the apprenticeship model works very well for them. We're working, of course, with the New Jersey Department of Labor and the New Jersey Workforce System so that we can deliver this message. In the state of New Jersey, our federal staff consists of a manager and four field staff. So uh, that's, that's, that's very difficult to get the message out. And I think that's one of the reasons the model is underutilized, because there's a lot of misperceptions. Well, if we get the federal government involved, there'll be a lot of oversight and there's going to be a lot of paperwork. And that isn't true. It's a very simplified process. So there's this misperception and a misunderstanding. And so a lot of folks think that unless you're either in advanced manufacturing or construction, the model won't work. However, there are occupational titles available in healthcare, advanced manufacturing, obviously, retail, finance, construction, IT, life sciences. So every industry sector is represented by the apprenticeship model. So you have five people to deal with, what are we, 40 million people in yes. this state? Um, how does that work? How do you get the message out? We, we 
partner as much as we can with community colleges, mm -hmm. with the workforce development system within the state, right. at a county le level and at a state level, with um, business organizations, with chambers of commerce, mm -hmm. with our educational system, particularly in the high school arena, because we're trying to get the message out to counselors that before we send folks off to college, maybe they should do a little career exploration to see what the job market is. Apprenticeship, the apprenticeship model has been known as the other four-year degree without the debt. Right. And that's a right. huge message. Uh, so five people to address 40 million people. And what I need from you now is your URL address so that our listeners might want to go see where they can get this help for manufacturers to get that. Right. If they just Google Apprenticeship USA, that's probably the best bet. Mm -hmm. They will be directed directly to our website, and um, I can provide local information if you like a local phone number. Uh, sure. For our New Jersey office, you can contact 732-750-9191. That will get you directly to our staff, Terrific. and we can dispatch a, sta a staff member to answer any questions or provide technical assistance on the model. Terrific. Terrific. Uh, several months ago, we were, uh, Manufacturing Talk Radio was invited to participate at an international um, uh, conference that was held at the German house in the, the German embassy in New York, and it, they were t discussing uh, the German educational system versus the U.S. The German one, uh, you're shaking your head, so I think you know what I'm about to say. They have t mandatory two days a week of vocational training and three days a week of liberal arts training. And the bottom line is that the child, or young adult, has a real good opportunity to make some career path choices on his own based on his likes and based on his skills. Um, I don't think that that's something that would wind up ever coming here. What's your thought on that? Well, uh, many times we hear about the German and the Swiss model, which is really no different from the United States model of apprenticeship because the apprenticeship model is the apprenticeship model. However, I think we have different philosophies. Mm -hmm. And in the United States, and um, I will just I will hone in on New Jersey because that's my sure. frame of reference. There is somewhat of a snobbery about mm. the apprenticeship model because it's misunderstood. Sure. Now, you know, many parents want their children to go to college, and the apprenticeship model does not preclude that because the related technical instruction component of the apprenticeship can be delivered at a community college or mm -hmm. a four-year institution. So they could be working towards both. Right. The other piece of that is that they are um, a achieving a nationally recognized credential. So that credential is recognized throughout the 50 states. And also, it's a benchmark not only of academic achievement, but actual job experience. Mm -hmm. So if they ever leave a particular company and would like to go someplace else, they have a document that says, I did this job, right. and I have the academic component right. as well that I've achieved. So that's the unfortunate piece of it. And even when I spoke about reaching out to the counselors in the school system, at least to give them a frame of reference as to what is the job market. And so if we're going to send students on post-secondary education, what does that mean to them? What's going to happen when they graduate? Is there a job available? What's the likelihood uh, based on their interests, likes, and dislikes? And so we try to counsel them that at least prepare them before sure. they leave and, right. and provide them with all the options that are available. I can't tell you how many times we get calls from parents who are aware of the model and ask us, why isn't this being delivered in the school system, to which we really can't reply. Correct. <laughs> Right now, there's uh, 700,000 vacant jobs in manufacturing in this country. And if we don't do something significant, that in 10 years, it's going to be 2.5 million yes. vacancies. And then we truly won't be a manufacturing uh, country. So uh, this is something that, uh, obviously, the states, I think the states are really the ones that need to push this because they're here on the ground. The federal government, yes, you're here, but you've got five people to deal with 40 million people. Uh, so you do need the help of the schools yes. and uh, the, the high school systems and so on. And you need the help of Manufacturing Talk Radio. Yes, so, we do. So if you yes, have any ideas or thoughts down the road uh, that you might want to be able to include us in presenting 
uh, a story, a, uh, uh, an idea uh, that you would like promoted or any of your people that you have here in New Jersey or Washington. We're connected to many uh, orgs uh, throughout the country and we'd be happy to help. It's uh, something that we're very uh, passionate about. Well, I do appreciate that opportunity, and uh, I will be in touch with you because I have a couple of companies, I think, that may want to discuss their apprenticeship so that other businesses can learn from their experience. Excellent. Thank Excellent. you. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure, Lou. I, Thank I appreciate you. it. Nice meeting you. Same here. Thank, Thank you. you.